Hello and welcome to the Should You Buy for the Warhammer 2C. We're going to take a look at the mech, its stats, its hard points, its hitbox locations based on the concept art, and whether or not you should buy it. Oh man, I've been waiting for this particular mech. The Warhammer is a great mech on the Inner Sphere side, and this thing is just larger and clan tech. Which... In, in that essence, it's already pretty much a yes, this is going to be a good mech, but there are some caveats on this. We have to go through the hard points that are available for this because it's probably not what you would expect if you don't know the stock designs of the Warhammer 2C. Let us head on down and take a look at the different packages that we have available. Of course, there is the standard pack, which has the 2C, the 2C2, and the 2C3. I'm just going to refer to these as like the base, the 2, and the 3 and for now on because I don't want to say 2C over and over and over again. Mech bays to store them in, 30 days of premium time, various cockpit items and titles and badges. The collector's pack for $40 has the base variant, the 2 and the 3, and a base variant that is boosted by 30% extra C bills with the special. Also, it has the uh, nice sort of tiger camo pattern i it looks pretty cool we got four mech bays 60 days of active premium time more cockpit items and more titles and badges there is the hero add-on the mall and a single mech bay for it and then the reinforcements of the four and the ten and mech bays for them and the hero and hero add-on the reinforcement add-ons are 15 dollars these all uh, contribute towards the current year's customer appreciation if you purchase it before that clicks over so um, if you are needing one more thing to upgrade to get a collector's pack or whatever to get your various bonuses this is one way to do it if you want uh, the uh, ultimate pack is just everything all together all at the same time for the same cost of buying it individually which again like i'll say for every single time it'd be nice if the ultimate pack was five or ten dollars less just to say hey thank you for going all in on us and getting the whole thing all at once when you could have gotten a full price game somewhere else we have early adopter rewards if you get before the end of november you're going to get some additional cockpit items some decals some colors some patterns and a bundle of in-game currency to help modify your mechs but let us take a look at the specs for the different warhammers it is an 80 ton clan assault mech it is a battle mech as we see we have a maximum engine rating so we can change around our engine size every single one of them has a max engine rating of 385 they come with ferro endo and double on all of them so not very much you need to spend in order to upgrade these really as long as you have xl engines sitting in the bank that you can put on these you're good, and these things will, won't cost you very much to get started uh, when you first get them. Although they do come with 320 standards, which aren't really a good engine, in my opinion, for just this mech. So you're going to want to change those out. But let us pop over to the Spreadsheet Warrior and take a look at the various uh, engines you can take with this, the speeds you'll get, and then the available pod space they will have. So because we've got a total range up to 385 we have the range of engines where there is both weight breakpoints and heatsink breakpoints the 255 the 280 300 325 350 375 and 385 with the 255 the 280 being where you can get that extra heatsink and a little bit faster without any additional weight and then the the additional heatsink breakpoints and the 385 just being the biggest engine you can take if you want to go down that route. I'm going to expect the majority of builds in this is going to take somewhere around a XL350. Because the mech does have 80 tons in total to play with. And an XL350 puts it up to just over 70 kilometers an hour. And that's where I like my mobility to be for this kind of size of mech. So, XL350 would give us approximately 41.14, or if you round that off a little bit of armor shavings, 41.5 tons to play with, which is over 50% pod space. Very nice. 
Some particular builds will probably drop that engine down to a 325 to go 65.8 and get 44.5 tons of pod space. And also, some may need to drop the Faro, uh, particularly, say, laser-based designs, in order to get additional slots to take more double heat sinks. But that'll be for laser bomb variants. But yeah, lots of pod space, well over 50%. So let us take a look at what types of builds we can do on the different variants of it. Uh, all of the theory crafting that I have here is with an XL350, unless I uh, state otherwise. Because these are battle mechs, we're going to look at them vertically, looking at the base variant of the 2C first. But something I want to say before we get into this is that a lot of these mechs are really similar to each other. They're basically trading energy hard points for missile hard points or vice versa. So, for example, we have the base variant here, the Warhammer 2C. We have a total of seven energy hard points. One in the head, one in the left arm, two in the left torso, two in the right torso, and one in the right arm. Very nice and symmetrical. With a single missile hard point in the right torso. Not much you can do with a single missile, so I'm pretty much going to ignore it, and this is going to be a laser vom design. Things like two large pulse lasers, five ER mediums, and a bunch of heat sinks. Um, that one you're going to have to drop ferro on in order to fit those heat sinks in. You could also do things like, say, seven medium pulse lasers with a bunch of double heat sinks and a really big engine, something like a 375 or the 385, just max it out. And go as fast as possible. But where the other variants are different is that they basically just take off one or two energy and add a missile hardpoint. I'm actually going to pop around not in my normal left to right here and I'm going to go into this pattern of decreasing energy and increasing missile. So the next one on that list would actually be the what we got here the 10 where we have a total of five energy. We have one in the head, one in the, two in the left arm, two in the right arm, and three missile. Two in the left torso, one in the right torso. So we've lost a pair of energy. We've gained a pair of missile. We can start to do things because we have three missile hard points, such as triple SRM6s, a bunch of medium pulse lasers, and make it sort of a push brawl kind of mech. You can do your ATM, LRM, designs if you wish. Next up in that sort of transition, we lose another energy, we gain another missile, is the Warhammer 4. We have a total of, what we see here, four energy, one in the head, two in the left arm, one in the right arm, and four missile, two in the left torso, two in the right torso. Again, very similar to the 10. We're just losing a single, uh, like a if it's a single energy to gain a single missile, so we're losing a medium pulse laser, we're gaining an SRM-6, and that's pretty much it. The builds are going to be very similar between the 4 and the 10. Continuing on with that theme of losing an energy and gaining a missile, we have got to the 2 here. We have a total of 2 energy and 5 missile. 1 energy in the left arm, 1 energy in the right arm, 3 missiles in the right torso, and 2 missiles in the left torso. This thing, again, is a little more biased towards the missile play. So something like five Artemis sixes with a pair of large pulse lasers. That's actually a build that I did on one of my blood asps. And I had that, I can't remember exactly what the video was called, but when I did my sort of initial impressions of the blood asp and I put up a video about it, I put that as one of the designs of sort of a laser missile brawl. And it worked pretty well. And you could do it on this Warhammer. But yeah, the majority of the builds you're going to do on Warhammer 2Cs is some combo of lasers with some combo of missiles, whether it be just SRMs or some form of uh, long-range support weapons, ATMs, LRMs, and then some quantity of pulse lasers, heavy lasers, ER mediums in order to supplement them. Realistically, the 4 and the 10 are very close to each other and actually very close to the 3 
in terms of how they would work. No, not the three, the, the two. Uh, with the five missiles on the two, you can pretty much do any missile focus design on the two, and then you get with the four and the ten for the reinforcements, just different flavors of slightly less missile with slightly more energy. So that's all the reinforcements are, is that additional flavor of less focus on the missiles. Then there is the three. It has seven energy, just like the, the base variant, with no missile in the right torso. It's just non-existent. So any laser design you can do on the base variant, you can do on the three. So there really isn't much point to having the three exist because the, the base variant can do it all. So there are pro... I would, I would wonder if this particular variant would have something about it with quirks. Because it doesn't have, say, jump jets, ECM, or mask. Like if it had mask, it'd be like, oh, it's just lasers, but fast. Or if it had ECM, that would be interesting. But it doesn't. There's nothing really to differentiate it from the 2C, the base variant. So could it have a quirk? I'm not sure, because it's a battle mech with on the clan side. It has everything going for it, so it doesn't need quirks, but it would maybe get one just to differentiate it. Don't know yet. But then we get to the hero, the Maul. And the Maul is the only one with ballistics. It is a total of four energy, one in each arm, one in each torso, two ballistics, one in each torso, and two missile, one in each torso. It would have been nice to see a ballistic-based Warhammer 2C in the standard pack. We could take the three because it is basically a carbon copy of the base variant. And, I don't know, lose a couple of energy, go down to say five energy or four energy or something like that. From its base of seven. And then give it a ballistic or two. Even if the ballistics were both in the same side torso so you couldn't really stack them or anything. That would leave the hero having that really uh, important part of having the ballistics separated into different side torsos, but give the standard pack some ballistics. That would have been nice, but unfortunately, that is not what has occurred. So if you do want to do any DACA, you have to do it in the hero, so you have to pay that $15 to get it, but the hero is going to be pretty cool, I, I, at least in my personal opinion. We've got the four energy, the two ballistic, two missile. We can do things like say, four medium pulse, a pair of LB20s, just make it a brawl thing. Uh, we're going to have to drop down to an XL325 for that just to get enough weight to carry all that power. You can also do the meta design of a pair of Gauss rifles, a pair of heavy larges, and a pair of ER mediums, which, you know, you can hit from a good 500 to 600 meters away, get a nice big old hit on the enemy with that meta design and there's a bunch of other stuff you could do with that we could do a pair of lrm 20s and some quantity of energy hard points you can do a uh, any fun combination of weapons because it has those ballistics in big side torsos where you have the room to do such things but yeah those are the variants the standard pack is pretty good it has some decent variety between the base variant and the two with the three just being a copy that maybe you could sell if it's not really that important as you don't need it to master the mech anymore the four and the ten are just different flavors of the difference between energy and missile and the mall is the daca if you want to actually use ballistics with your warhammer 2c well, let us pop back up to the top and take a look at the concept art we see that, of course, it's a Warhammer, so it's fairly vertical. The hitboxes are probably going to be pretty good. These shoulder pads here are going to be part of the, sh the arm hitbox, so it should be pretty decent for twisting off damage, depending on what its mobility stats are going to be like. The missile hardpoints look like they're nice and high above the shoulder, but not too big, not like Timberwolf ears. They're going to be, hopefully nice and slim when you're using SRM6s and such so that your profile isn't too large. 
we have the energy hard points that are approximately halfway down the torso. So not too far down, but again, not too far up. If they were up here right against the uh, the top of the torso, that would be just perfect. But we can't have everything. They're not too bad. They're going to be okay for peaking, but you're going to have to expose a little bit more of your mech than maybe that you want to. The arms, although drooping down here, would probably be about waist level when they're equal. So a little bit lower than your torso hard points, but functional. Uh, definitely not knuckle draggers or though uh, anything that would be below the waistline. So the hitboxes and hardpoint locations look pretty decent for this mech. But yeah, that is going to be it for my review of the Warhammer 2C. I think it looks good. It's unfortunate there's no ballistics in the standard pack. I would replace the three variant with even just like lose two energy hard points and give it a single ballistic. And then that would be a perfect pack, in my opinion, for people to get the perfect little standard pack. But that is going to be it. Thanks for watching and good hunting.